object of my heart's affection would be so instrumental in my gain in Mr. Lincoln's favor. <laughs> Pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm sorry, what is your name? Shirley. Oh, and we are on first name basis. Oh, how wonderful. Miss <laughs> Shirley, where are you from? Chicago. Eleanor? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, that is the most wonderful news I have had all day. And considering what a momentous morning this has been, that is saying a great deal indeed. I will admit, upon first meeting, Mr. Lincoln was not the most handsome man, <laughs> nor the most well-dressed. He cut quite a figure in those early days, <laughs> young and as thin as he is now. His hair untamed, he would stride along the streets of Springfield, covering as much ground in one step as most men would cover in two. <laughs> would that I were by his side, but my position requires my presence where my heart is so far from being. Not that I'm not delighted to be here with you. <laughs> Tear her a uniform from Mr. Stanton, along with a commission to the rank of Colonel. <laughs> he insisted that he have a sash befitting his new rank. <laughs> Only those who have passed through such bereavements can realize how the heart bleeds at the return of such anniversary. And to lose the animal that had brought our angel child such joy. But that only tore at the wound that never heals. Looking back, all of my bow were hard bargains. <laughs> <laughs> there was Mr. Edwin Webb, a widower of modest merit and his two sweet little objections. <laughs> <laughs> and the grandson of Patrick Henry. What an honor. But I loved him not. And my hand could never be given where my heart was not. <laughs> Mr. Clay, my father says that you will be the next president of the United States. I wish I could go to Washington and live in the White House. <laughs> Mr. Clay said, but if I am ever president, I shall expect Mary Todd to be one of my first guests. <laughs> I accepted his offer graciously <laughs> and whispered to him, if you were not already married, I would wait for you. <laughs> there have been tears. There have been heartbreaks and disappointments. But through it all, there has been love. Mr. Lincoln has not been the easiest man to understand or domesticate. <laughs> and I doubtless have trespassed many times and oft upon his great tenderness and amiability of care. Until we meet again, believe me to be your ever-attached friend. And I bid you a good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>